In this video, I'm gonna show you how to remove your grill. So, let's get started. I need to get this cover out of the way, and in order to do that, I have to get the spare tire tool slash jack handle out of the way. So just unclip it from its retainers and set it aside. And now we can just go along and undo all the push clips that hold this down. I don't have any of my original push clips anymore. These are all aftermarket push clips that someone has put in. So whatever yours are, just go ahead and remove them in whatever way they need to be removed. With all the push clips removed, don't forget there are two over here. Lift this up and slide it out of the way. Next, I'd want to remove both driver's and passenger side headlights. And I have different aftermarket headlights, which are one piece. The corner light slash turn signal with the headlight assembly is all one piece. But the process will be the same even if you have the factory style two piece headlight. Go ahead and pull up on these tabs and that will unlock the headlight assembly. You can slide it straight out. There you go. Now on the factory style, the corner light may or may not have a screw that comes in from the top right back here. If you have it, unscrew it. If not, well, it'll come right out. Unplug the headlight assembly and you'd want to do the same to the driver's side. Now across the top, you'll see Phillips head screws like this. Go ahead and remove all of them. And on each side where each headlight is, there are two more Phillips head screws. Go ahead and remove those as well. Near each headlight on the fender, this applies to both sides, you'll have this rubber piece, which is just a wind deflector, wind barrier, for in between the bumper and the fender and the uh, grill at the front there. So I'm just going to try to pry this down and basically remove these push clips that hold it on. We have to unhook it from the fender. So this one's out. I'll try and get this out of here. There's one. Second one. And do the same to the other side. And with those out, just continue along right here where the headlight would be. And there should be four more of those clips. Remove those as well on both sides. And at this point, if you reach your hand behind here, it's very difficult for me to show you right now, but I will show you once it's off. You can feel some clips. If you look under here, you'll see a tab that sticks in through and it's clipped on with almost like a spring loaded looking clip. You have to push up on it and that will release the grill. I already did the other side, so once I do this side, it should want to pop right out. There we go. And off comes the grill. Now the clips that I was talking about go in right here. And this is what they look like. They just have this little spring part to them. You just have to squeeze them. Before we put the grill back, I want to talk about these, which are wind dams, wind deflectors, whatever you want to call them. They basically go right underneath here, and that's where all the push clips went that we disconnected. So a lot of mine broke, and I have new ones. But what you want to do is actually put the push clip in right before you put this piece back in. Um, for me, it kind of fell out, so I have to put it in, but sometimes they'll stay in there. They kind of just hang on to the bumper. So that's what I wanted to mention. Slide the push clips through before you put them in, and then once the grill is on, then we'll actually push them into the grill and lock them in. So this is what I'm talking about. This is what I did. I put the push clips in halfway. Like you see, I have a bunch of new ones here. A couple of them are still the old ones, but regardless, this will help installation because you don't have to struggle to slide them in once everything is in there and you have very little room. Now what I'm gonna do is slide these down just like this, kind of get them into position. Now, like I said, if yours did not fall out, well, then you don't have to worry about this. Now let's take the grill, slide it into place. Obviously I don't have a new one, but if you had a new one, you would use the new one. Anyway. Make sure you don't scratch up your fenders. Make sure the wiring for the headlights goes through the headlight mounting holes. Line it up. And those two tabs that slide into here, make sure those line up as well. That's the only thing securing it at the bottom here. I heard one click. Second click. On each side, you'll see these pins here. That's what these need to line up with. I'm gonna put these two screws in so that it stays secure on this side. Then I'm gonna to go to the other side and line it up so that when I move it around, it doesn't pop off of here. OK, 
Okay, nice and snug. Don't go too tight. These are screwing into plastic and you'll either uh, break the plastic that it screws in or strip it or break these tabs. So nothing good, basically. Now along the top, put back all the screws that you removed. And with all those tightened, let's put back the headlights. Plug in the marker light slash turn signal, and then plug in your main connector, which controls the low and high beams. Now slide the headlight in. Make sure these tabs are lined up because that's what locks the headlight assembly onto the body. Okay, this one lines up. Tap it down, so does this one. Perfect, headlight's locked in. Do the same to the other side. Let's not forget to re-secure the, this uh, plastic piece here, the wind dam, wind barrier. And this is why I said it's a lot easier to have the push clips already in there when you try to do this, because all you have to do is press them in, as opposed to trying to slide them in and line them up at the same time. Just go all the way around, do this to both sides. Now bring in this cover here at the front, line it up, and let's put in all the push clips that hold this on. And don't forget to put back the spare tire tool. There you have it. This is how you replace your grill. And because we removed the headlights, I highly recommend checking the alignment on them, although you don't have to. They will most likely still be the same, but it can't hurt. So here's how you align the headlights. Now we're gonna get the vehicle ready to aim the headlights. Start with the tire pressure, making sure all four tires are set at the appropriate pressure. Remove any excessive weight that's not normally in the vehicle. Find a wall that you can drive up to where the ground is level. Measure 25 feet away from that wall and mark the ground. Drive your vehicle up to that mark. With the headlights off, look for the center dot in the headlight lens. Measure from the ground to that center dot. You can use a ruler to help you out. Transferring that measurement to the wall, making a mark with some tape. On the driver's side, measure down four inches, putting another piece of tape. For the passenger side, you only need to measure down two inches. Now turning the headlights on, it is easier to do this at night or in a dark area. Locating your headlight adjuster and using a Phillips head screwdriver, turn your adjuster one way or another to bring the headlight up or down. Once the headlight is adjusted to the tape mark on the wall, move on to the next headlight. If you're confused because the beams seem to blend together, you can always have someone stand in front of the other headlight while you make your adjustments for that one. Now your headlights are aligned and you're all set to go. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.